can't tell by the look of the shop. Something is different about our Bailey. So we've been using this old Heston 560 baler now for two years. And it was a good upgrade from the original Gale Bale 1500A that we started with. However, we've kind of outgrown this as well. Um, it's actually a good baler, still bales and does everything it's supposed to. But we have moved on mainly because of net wrap. This stuff came with the baler, of course, because without the monitor, um, it won't work anyways. So this monitor controls everything on this baler. This baler has no hydraulic remotes that go to the tractor. It is 100% self-contained, just like our Heston 560, meaning that the PTO shaft spins, it drives a hydraulic pump on the baler, and this controls a bunch of different solenoids to allow it to function or do what it's supposed to be doing at that moment. This is actually going to tell it what it's supposed to be doing at that moment. So we need to get this plugged, or not plugged in, so to speak, but we need to get it wired up. Now, it is pretty easy to wire it, and the... Alright, let's see if it powers up here. So, this is the power plug to it, and there is two wires that go to it. We are obviously going to use those two wires. I do not have this connector, nor am I worried about it, because what we're going to do is we're going to remove this connector just by taking the screws out, disconnecting the wiring to it, and then we're going to use this to just wire it to a um, cigarette lighter, essentially. I guess that kind of shows my age. Cigarette lighter. People probably don't say that anymore. boss lady. I promise I'm doing it right. All right, so right here, you're going to see that there's two screws on this plug. We're going to take those off so we can get this three prong piece out. There's only two wires that go into it. And we're just going to put a cigarette lighter adapter on it because that's what's going to work well for our tractor. I'm using this style of connector because it allows me to basically unplug the cigarette lighter if I ever needed to, to put something different on there. Professional-ish. sure you can see right here I've got two screws into this little bracket that we put on here for the last bail monitor. Very simple to mount and then we're just going to flip this up. Which we're not going to hit perfect. Got it plugged in, got everything set up. It's plugged into the baler. Now I will say that it threw me for a loop because I just pressed the button to turn it on, right? Okay, that time it worked. You got to hold it for a second like push in like a kind of a long press, not just in and out. And then it'll light up like so. And that's going to say that we're out of twine, out of net wrap. We're going to say we're out of all kinds of things because it's in a uh, low pressure, like all the pressure has been released and nothing is actually running at the moment. So we're going to get the, we're going to get out there. We're going to get the PTO on it and take it outside. We're going to grease it and get everything ready to rip. Hey, quick question. Do you guys wash your balers or do you just blow them off? I think you can see the answer on mine here. Well, to an extent you've seen the answer. We just bought this baler and it was a little dirty, dusty, etc. We just cleaned it up because we want to be able to keep an eye on anything that might be an issue. So we wash it, then we grease it afterwards, and then from there on it just gets blown off. I'm still curious though. Do you guys wash your balers or not? Or do you just blow them off? What's your rules? Put it in the comments below. Next thing we need to do before we use this, we need some net wrap. I know what it'll do. We're going to get our flag on. 
order super deluxe shipping yes thanks ups guy man that was quick all right now we're ready to bail it looks like we've got everything set you see it's pulled all the way across you can even see it down here it's obviously going to catch and run when it hits against the rollers makes you feel pretty good right that's going to be some beautiful net wrap bales. Now then, next thing we need to do is check our twine. I think it's good to go. Looks good to go. It's tight, but that's because it's against this. That's good. That's the outside part. That's the outside part. All right, those are ready. What's cool about these balers is they've kind of central located a lot of grease points. So I've got these four, I've got one there, and that one actually goes up to there so I don't have to climb on the baler at all. A couple more down here. So there's a few that are scattered out, but for the most part, all of them are in one spot. And then we'll hit these other pieces and we'll be good to go. That's what the inside looks like. Now, yeah, it's wet, it looks muddy, it's just because of all that dust and we washed it. I understand why it looks like that. It's all going to get cleaned up and shined up anyways when all this hay starts coming over it. I wipe most of it off, I wipe a little bit more of it off before we start, but overall, that's pretty much what it's going to look like and we're going to get bailing. I guess she wants to ride. You want to ride? Come on. Good girl. There you go. Whew, look at that beautiful shiny hood. And we're off. Now, like I mentioned, this is a 100% self-contained baler. There is no hydraulic support coming from the tractor. So everything is on its own. And it's eating. because, like I said, I'm a little afraid to go any faster at the moment. It still says we're centered, so I'm going to assume that the sensors are working, because it did tell me to go left and right here and there. I'm not 100% sure it wrapped it, so I'm going to drive a little farther and wrap it again. Come here. Here. Stop. Need a break. This is what it looked like. I'm pretty sure I have some settings that aren't right. I, uh, I need to go look at those. It might have actually wrapped it to begin with because now that I look at it, like this was while it was tight. Like, it's, it's a solid bale. A little soft on the edges, but it might have been the way I fed too. Definitely a little low on this side. Check left and check right twine. So let's see what it wants to do. Everything works like it should. Unless you just simply can't follow instructions like this guy. So right behind us, you're going to see those two little black wheels. Those two little black wheels have the twine wrap on it now. However, for whatever reason, when I pulled it off earlier, I never put it back around those. There's a sensor on there, so it tells it if twine's feeding or not. If it's not, it'll stop the whole operation from wrapping because it doesn't think anything's happening. There's little magnets on the uh, those wheels, and there's a little sensor like a pickup, essentially. And as it goes around, it says, yep, it's speeding. 
and it'll tell you left or right twine. It'll tell you all of them. Yeah. I read through that whole book, still didn't figure that out. Called the guy I bought it from, and that was the first thing he said. Man, I'm foolish. It'll definitely go faster than what we're doing, but I'm learning the ropes. Just had to make one more little adjustment. Not a bad deal. I also understand these arrows more now, too. So if it tells me to drive left, it's because it wants more on the right-hand side of the baler. So, confusing in the aspect that if It'd be better to me if it was telling me like, hey, I want more, like whatever this arrow is doing, I want more in that side of the uh, baler, but whatever. I get it. That's what they have owner's manuals for, so you can figure out what they want. <laughs> 